In this video, I will discuss the four best practices to create automation pipelines for continuous integration flows. The purpose of a pipeline is to build code, execute our test for continuous integration, and install an updated version of the software for continuous deployment. When it comes to an automation pipeline, it consists of automatic procedures for our software delivery process. The four best practices are parallel execution with Docker containers, on-premise execution for sensitive platforms, API integration with any third-party tool, and zero configuration and orchestration by Test Projects platform. You can find more information from Mark's article called Test Automation Pipelines for Modern CI Flows. The first practice is parallel execution with Docker containers. Parallel execution is a process to reduce execution time and provide fast results. A Docker container is software that contains code and everything that depends on the code. It helps the application run secure regardless of the environments by including system tools, system libraries, and settings. This diagram illustrates parallel execution with Docker containers. The agent for a test project is downloaded with Selenium and Appium drivers, plus it has built-in capabilities for reporting. We can download the agent for desktop or for Docker. The Docker agent saves us a lot of resources and provides an approach to execute our test. After downloading the agent, we register the agent one of two ways. One scenario involves the permanent execution engine and the other scenario involves the ephemeral instance. The permanent execution engine registers test projects agent one time and runs our test from test projects platform. The ephemeral instance is used to carry out a specific task such as running a job, then it will terminate when completing that task. We authorize the Docker agent by setting up an API key. The job ID is not required for execution unless we plan to use test project cloud. If we use the cloud, then the test cases are deployed, executed, and reported automatically for a CI flow. The CI flow can also be executed on premise for sensitive platforms. When I say sensitive, I'm talking about platforms that normally has a pain with deployment or configuration. It's not a problem with the next gen release version two from Test Project. It integrates with tools like Jenkins and use internal version controls repositories like GitLab. Some of the benefits include hybrid cloud with offline mode, and command line interface CLI. Even though it's on premise, we can still utilize Docker containers or a virtual machine. The agent brings together each driver and configuration to run our web or mobile test scripts. For the automation pipeline, this diagram has five parts. Create test, test repository, CI orchestration, test execution, and HTML reports. The first two parts allows us to create and save our test. We can save in the cloud or on a YAML file. The third component, which is CI orchestration, generates a customized pipeline. Next is test execution. It has some, some commands and processing status when using the CLI command line interface. It shows how to start the agent, print the version, get a list of browsers, and run a file. The last part is HTML reports, which are created automatically for this CI flow. Now, API integration with any third-party tool is another practice for creating an automation pipeline. 
API stands for Application Programming Interface, and it allows two applications to communicate with each other. Therefore, an API defines interactions between multiple applications. For example, in this diagram, we see GitHub Actions, Azure DevOps, Jenkins, and Circle CI. These are applications that provide an API which triggers the automation pipeline. It's the same with test project because the cloud platform provides a RESTful API. In the cloud platform, we see test artifacts, test parameters, job configuration, projects and teams, plus test reports. One of the benefits is test automation can be triggered anywhere, including the command line. Also in this diagram is a deployment for our test. It can be downloaded using Docker to the public cloud. It can be downloaded on-premise. It can, in addition to on-premise, our test can be deployed to a device form, also known as a cloud web and mobile testing platform. The two most popular platforms are Sauce Labs and Browser Stack. Oh, I forgot to mention Test Project reports the results and notify the pipeline when it is complete. So when it comes to the last practice, it is zero configuration and orchestration. It's no configuration because a complete scheduling system and execution procedure is prepared by Test Project. However, there is one action we need to perform and that action is create a job. Creating a job helps us to finish the CI flow. We have permission for the job to have a combination of a target agent, target platforms, data source, schedule, notification, and or custom capabilities. The target agent can be a local or remote physical agent, also a virtual agent to run on a third party device form. Target platforms are allowed to be browsers, mobile devices, emulators, simulators. The data source is a CSV file with a set of parameters for data driven testing. We can run a job according to a schedule by selecting a day, hours, and minutes, one time or recurring. Job notifications inform us when the job starts execution and when the jobs finish executions. The custom capabilities support our test with special conditions on our target browser or device. This special condition shows Chrome browser version 83. That's it for the four best practices to create automation pipelines for continuous integration flows. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.